what's the best aperture to use for street photography. Let's get into it. We're going to deep dive into one of the most important settings in photography, aperture. Specifically, we'll be discussing the best aperture to use for street photography. And you'll learn about how aperture affects depth of field, which will ultimately make you a more proficient and confident street photographer. Let's jump straight in. So first, let's have a look at what aperture is and how it works. In simple terms, the aperture refers to the opening in your lens that allows light to pass through to your camera's sensor. It's measured in f-stops with lower numbers like f1.4 representing wider apertures and higher f-stops such as f16 representing narrower apertures. Aperture plays a crucial role in determining the depth of field of your photos, which is the amount of your image that appears sharp and in focus. Wide apertures result in a shallower depth of field with only a small portion of the image in focus and a blurred background. Narrow apertures, on the other hand, provide a deep depth of field with more of the image appearing sharp and in focus. Wide apertures range from f1.4 to f4. The main benefit of using wide apertures is the ability to create a shallow depth of field, which can help isolate your subject and separate them from the background. Whereas apertures from f4.5 up to f5.6 serve as a transition between wide and mid-range apertures, which we're gonna get into soon, offering a balanced depth of field for various street photography situations. However, wide apertures also allow more light to enter the lens, making them ideal for low light situations. They are also useful if you want to create a softer vibe for your images. When I'm shooting in the daytime, I often set my aperture to a wide aperture of approximately f3.2. I sometimes don't want everything in the frame to look completely sharp. As we've discussed, a wide aperture lets more light in through the lens. Therefore, you can afford to use a minimal ISO, 100 to 200 on bright sunny days, and 200 to approximately 800 on cloudy days and in built up areas. Therefore, the camera will pick a fast shutter speed to compensate for the wide aperture, which is perfect for street photography as a fast shutter speed will let you capture your moving subjects in sharp detail. At night time, a wide aperture is crucial because you need as much light as possible to enter your lens when it's dark. And even at the widest aperture, you will need to bump up your ISO from approximately 800 to 6400 to get a correct exposure. Also at night time, there is no room for fast shutter speeds as the camera's shutter will only be open for a fraction of a second. So expect to use shutter speeds of 1 over 100 seconds or slower, which will keep the shutter open for longer, thus letting more light onto the camera's sensor. Wide apertures are useful for street portraits if you're using a lens that allows a shallow depth of field. Even if you have a camera with a fixed wide angle lens like my Ricoh GR3 or GR3X, you can still take street portraits using a wide aperture. You just won't get that beautiful bokeh background that's become synonymous with portrait photography. Now let's talk about a couple of exercises that you can use to put these concepts into practice. First, when it comes to street portraits, focus on your subject's face to create a strong connection with the viewer of your photos. For street portrait photography, you can either look for a clean, uncluttered background or a background that shows the environment that your subject inhabits, which is what I usually go for. It's difficult on the streets to find clean backgrounds, so don't worry too much about finding one. I was fortunate to capture this lovely person with the seaside behind her. I was specifically looking for clean backgrounds 
to make the point for you in the video and while the sea and sky in this image provides a clean background the horizon goes right through the back of her head and could be improved if I had adjusted the camera angle. Such are the perils of running and gunning shooting candid shots on a busy seafront with a camera that doesn't provide much shallow depth of field even at f2.8. However, it's important to keep your eye open and be aware of these kind of things if you're looking for those clean backgrounds if you want to practice this kind of street portraiture. Don't be afraid to experiment with different angles or perspectives like shooting from a low angle or getting in close for a more intimate shot. And if you're feeling bold, interact with the person that you are shooting to capture those candid moments that reveal their personality and character. Now I'm not one for too much interaction, but in these cases it was nice that these two fellas and this couple gave me a smile as I approached them. Particularly this guy who was comically wrestling his dogs away from another dog beforehand. If you don't mind getting in close, go for it. I personally use the crop modes on the GR3 and the GR3X in order to get closer to the subjects. I'll link that video now in the cards so you can check it out and see how I operate. Finally, for this section, let's talk about a fun exercise that you can do for night street photography using a wide aperture. Set your camera to aperture priority and dial in f2.8. The wide aperture will allow more light through your lens, which ultimately allows more light to reach your sensor, making it easier to capture well-exposed shots in low light conditions. Then set your camera up with auto ISO, which will give you leeway when entering darker or brighter areas. Auto ISO lets you set a range for your ISO, select a minimum shutter speed of approximately 1 one hundredth of a second, or even slower if you know that you can handhold the camera and still get sharp shots at slow shutter speeds. I personally can get sharp shots at 1 30th of a second at night time and I use auto area autofocus in the center mode on my Ricoh cameras and I use that in the night time and in the daytime. And the Ricoh cameras aren't particularly known for their snappy focusing systems. So the best thing to do is for you to experiment and test out your camera's autofocusing system and find out the slowest shutter speed that you can use and see what works for you in order to capture subjects sharply at night time and in the daytime. Then for night shooting, set the auto ISO range from 800 to 6400. In practice, this means that you can walk around at night using a wide aperture and feel safe in the fact that the camera will only fluctuate from the base ISO of 800 that you set. If the camera's exposure meter calculates that the minimum shutter speed of 1 over 100 seconds is giving you an underexposed shot. One thing that you have to be aware of when using auto ISO with minimum shutter speed in aperture priority is that if you enter a dark area and the camera increases to the maximum ISO value that you have set of 6400 and there's still not enough light for the exposure, the camera will sacrifice the minimum shutter speed and drop below 1 over 100 seconds. It will never go over the maximum ISO but it will sacrifice the minimum shutter speed. Speed. So that's why it's important to work out what the minimum shutter speed is that you can shoot with and still get sharp shots. So as you walk the streets at night, keep an eye out for interesting subjects illuminated by street lights and shop windows. Just a quick one, if you haven't already, please give this video a like and please subscribe for more street photography tips, tutorials and inspiration. I always appreciate it. Mid-range apertures offer a nice balance between depth of field and sharpness. Apertures from f5.6 to f8 are a great choice for general street photography as they provide a good amount of flexibility and can adapt to various situations. f9 up to f11 are bridging the gap between mid-range and narrow apertures, giving you a greater depth of field. 
but with a mid-range aperture, you can get a good sense of environmental context in your street photos, as these apertures are great for picking up the subject whilst also keeping the background sharp and detailed. For some exercises that you can do, I know I've mentioned this before in my video on composition techniques, but you'll find that using the obstruction and reflection technique works wonders with mid-range apertures as you'll get that deeper depth of field that you need which makes shooting through objects or shooting reflections in windows so much easier. So you can test out these apertures to create a layered composition along with auto ISO 100 to 3200 ISO with a minimum shutter speed of 1 to 50th of a second, use an aperture of f5.6 to f8 to angle your camera against an interesting window display and wait for the right subject to walk along. You will pick up the various details in the window and what's going on in the reflection. With that deeper depth of field, it's always an exciting and an interesting image for your portfolio photographs with an aperture of f8 in this shot i love the colors and the detail on this giant lollipop which i wanted to get in sharp focus as well as this guy gazing calmly into the sweet shop window the lollipop giving this photo some visual context as to what the subject is actually doing so i would really recommend setting your aperture to a mid-range aperture of f5.6 to f8 and trying out these obstruction and reflection shots. The reflection shots in particular are so much fun to shoot as shooting them is actually really simple. The brilliance of them is that they can come out looking extremely layered and complicated. Finally, we have narrow apertures, which are F11 and beyond. Narrow apertures are perfect for landscape photography because every element of the composition needs to be in sharp focus. The main advantage of using narrow apertures is the ability to capture a deep depth of field. In street photography, this can be used for shooting layered compositions or when you want to keep multiple subjects in focus. If I want to be certain that every single part of the composition is in sharp focus, such as an object in the foreground, the subject and the background, I will use an aperture from around f11 to f14. These are my limits for narrow apertures and I only use them sparingly on the streets. Some exercises that you can try. Street photography on the beach is something that I do very often. So with narrow apertures, try capturing layered formations of people on the beach or just a large portion of the beach. However, if you don't live near the seaside, go out and shoot a cityscape that might have a leading line or just a shot that reveals iconic building details in the background. Those kind of shots are well fitted to shooting with narrow apertures. You could also consider shooting more of an urban landscape style street shot that features a local street that has lots of activity and is also aesthetically pleasing to the eye, like these shots of George Street in Hastings in East Sussex. Finally, just like with mid-range apertures, narrow apertures are also great for the obstruction technique. However, as you can see here, you can do it on a much deeper scale with a larger urban landscape. Narrow apertures require good lighting conditions, so you'll need to use high ISOs in order to maintain a fast enough shutter speed, which is why I always stress about the importance of using auto ISO with a broad ISO range of 100 to 3200 during the daytime, as this alleviates that issue. So how do you decide which aperture to use for your street photography? Based on what we've learned today, there are a few factors to consider. The desired depth of field or subject isolation. Particularly useful for street portraits, ask yourself, do I want a shallow depth of field to separate my subject from the background? Or do I want more of the overall scene in focus? 
the available light and your desired shutter speed. In low light situations, you will need to use a wide aperture to expose your shot correctly and maintain a moderately fast enough shutter speed that not only lets enough light in to the sensor so that you can get a correct exposure, but still allows you to avoid camera shake or blur your artistic vision and the mood that you want to convey. The choice of aperture can affect the overall look and feel of your street photos. So consider the creative impact of your aperture selection. Of course, everything that I've discussed with you today is meant to serve as guidelines based on my knowledge and experience. Feel free to experiment and interpret these guidelines in your own way. For example, you might choose to shoot reflections with wide or narrow apertures, or capture urban landscapes with mid-range apertures. The key is to use these guidelines as a starting point for your own creative exploration and to find out what works for you and your unique photographic style. And when you carry out these experiments, use aperture priority along with auto ISO that way you get to creatively adjust your aperture whilst the camera figures out your shutter speed and ISO for you. So is there a single best aperture for street photography? The short answer is no. The best aperture will depend on the specific situation, the available light and your desired depth of field and your creative intent. Instead of searching for a one-size-fits-all solution, focus on how aperture affects your images and learn to adapt your settings to the scene in front of you. I'd love to hear from you in the comment section. What's your go-to aperture for street photography and why? And also, do you have any techniques or tips that you would like to share? Please let me know down below. However, if you want to learn how to master shooting streetlight photos at nighttime, then check out this video here. Until we meet again, go forth and create. Thank you.